Here he is, one of our favorite people, former assistant general manager of the Vancouver uh, Canucks sports executive, and uh, a very insightful tweet this morning on how NHL schedules are made. It's our buddy Chris Gear. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great, guys, and I heard you plugging uh, Audi, and I'm currently driving the Audi e-tron GT and loving every minute of it, so uh, I'm happy to plug your sponsor as well. Oh, thank you. you. That is a very uh, sharp-looking car. Uh, In fact, I saw one the other day uh, at Northlands. They're absolutely gorgeous, so appreciate that, Chris. Um, So your tweet, and I'll just read the first line, and you take it from there, my friend. I mean, this is the second straight year where the Vancouver Canucks have started on a big, long road trip. Last year, of course, it was six games, two, three, and one. This year, it's the five-gamer, and we're 3 and one heading into the finale in Minnesota. Quote, ever wonder how the NHL schedule gets developed? Chris, fill us in. How does it get developed? Yeah, so it, it starts with the NHL soliciting a building availability camera for camera, calendar from all 32 teams. And so... You know, the process starts with the teams looking at their available dates. Obviously, they've got concerts. Some some buildings will have NBA commitments, National Lacrosse League commitments, uh, Disney on Ice commitments, whatever it may be, right? Madison Square Garden would probably have something most nights of the year. And so you lay that all out for the league, and then they take your calendar and mesh it up with the other 32 teams and find, okay, where can we get all these games? They've also got to worry about the equities of travel, if possible, the equities of back-to-backs. They're trying to create something that's balanced. And they've also got 32 GMs or AGMs in their ear saying, this is our priority. This is, you know, we have to have a game on, on this particular date at home because it lines up with, you know, something in our community. Or we absolutely can't have a game this particular week because of something that's going on in our community. Um, but you have more influence than you think. So it's not the NHL just doesn't dump a schedule on you and say, here you go. That's it. You can have a fair bit of influence in, in what dates they give you by manipulating or, or working with the the calendar of holds that you give them. So I pointed out that if you don't want to start on the road, then you hold all the dates in, in late October so that, you know, they, they can't put you, uh, they have to schedule it so that you're at home in, in at the beginning because then they're going to have to put you on the road when when you don't have those home dates. Uh, similarly, if you you know want to be home for the holidays, uh, you know you can schedule holds uh, in that part of December and and keep the rest of December uh, available or, or blocked for them so that they have to schedule you on the road. Um, Likewise, I know does we, the NHL vet that? Like, can you say, "Oh, yeah, we're really busy from October seventeenth to thirty first. Do they say prove it? Do they say prove that you've got you know Britney Spears and Taylor Swift coming in here, or, or do they just take you at your word? Well, it's a bit of both. I mean, they they obviously know what the tour schedules are. They they work with yeah, you know, the Live Nations and AEGs of the world as well, and understand who's touring and and sort of where those tours go, and so. You know, I'm not suggesting for a minute that you you lie to the league. I'm just saying you can you can put you know you can schedule your holds with assumptions about what concerts you might get, and that you're holding those yes. dates with the anticipation you might get those concerts, even if you don't land them. So um, it, it's it's you know the the league has a really tough job, like you know scheduling a schedule for, for 32 teams with all the various commitments that teams have in their buildings. It's a monumental task. And ultimately, you're never going to get everything you want. Um, but all I'm saying is that you do have some ability to influence how your schedule comes out. And it's not yeah. just handed to you with no no. Ability. I would lie to the league, by the way, just to be clear. I would have no problem. <laughs> well, we all know that. that. I mean, the league lies to us. So it's yeah, turned exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Chris, is there also an element that has to do with the buildings that have the co-tenancy with the NBA? Like, I remember years ago it was talked about that, it, you know, one of the sort of stipulations of the NBA and, and ownership and whatnot is that you had to have first refusal on your building or something like that. So the Madison Square Gardens, the L.A. facility, like those facilities that also host the NBA, are there not stipulations that like, does the NBA get a chance to schedule before the NHL or are you familiar with anything with regards to you the know, overlap with the NBA buildings? I, I'm not sure about 
priorities. But obviously, when you have an NBA team and they require, you know, 82 dates or whatever they play as well, um, that's going to narrow what you're able to give the NHL in terms of opportunities to schedule. Um, and I, I think, in fact, the, the NBA schedule does come out first, right? So I think their process is ahead of the NHL, which suggests to me that those date commitments need to be there first. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it does when you've got an NBA team and, and certainly other teams like a WNBA or NLL, it, it does limit what you're able to, to offer the league. And sometimes you just have to take what you get. But in other instances, it does allow you to have more influence on what your NHL schedule looks like. Yeah. It stand- well, go ahead. Like it, it said, it, it stands to reason that, you know, starting on a long road trip would be a detriment to the start of your season. Are you seeing anything in particular besides the win-loss column that leads you to believe that's what is doing it here for the Canucks? Because, I mean, the Minnesota Wild, as we've talked about, they've been at home and have had this terrible start to the season, so it's not necessarily the silver bullet. Um, And I think you could also make the uh, case that early on in the season, hey, bonding out on the road um, might be a good way to start. Um, What's – what? When do you decide, ah, this this group needs to go on the road early, this group needs to be at home early? What's the metric there? Well, that's that's a good question. And, and your scheduling work is done before you really know the chemistry or the makeup of your right. team and, and whether that would be an advantage or a disadvantage. There are some coaches who believe that, you know, starting on the road is is a positive thing, that you have that opportunity to be in the hotel together, in the, in the team meal rooms together and, and forming those bonds. Um, you know, other people feel it's it's more important to to be at home to start. I don't know that there's a perfect answer there. Obviously, the last couple of years uh, w- would lead you to believe that starting on the road is is a bad thing. But it's you know, I think we when we did a bunch of analysis a few years ago, one conclusion we came up with is that good teams win both at home and on the road. <laughs> yeah. <and> struggling teams <laughs> lose both at home and on the road. So yeah, yeah, right. it's, uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, the schedule is only one small piece of the equation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but of course it has been a longstanding drama in this market. The famous trips from Gillis and Gil, uh, Gilman to head office in New York to advocate on behalf of a schedule. And they of course were so concerned about travel before, you know, load management and fatigue management became as uh, as pronounced as it is so much so that like they had to travel there because I don't think the NHL was taking their calls on schedule <laughs> at some point. Uh, Blake, do you not remember we were in New York one night with the Canucks for a game against the Rangers? Trevor Linden walked into our broadcast set up there looking a little exasperated. We said, Trev, what's up? He goes, just came from the league where I was telling Gary and Bill and everyone, it's ridiculous that we come here to play the Islanders and the Rangers and then have to make a second trip Not to the, the Devils. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, to play the Devils later in the year. Chris, just last question on this matter. Do you think Rutherford and Alvin are going to probably want to start at home next year after what we've seen this year? Well, I, I think the tendency is going to be to try to do that. Yes. Just to, just to change the mix a little bit and see, you know, see if they can get a different result. Um, you know, and those those meetings with the league happen every year with every team, and and the guys that run the scheduling for the league they get an earful from from thirty two teams, uh, and and they do a great job. But you know, Vancouver does have Vancouver, Edmonton, Seattle, uh, you know, Vegas to some extent. These teams travel a lot, and so they do have legitimate concerns when trying to to get a schedule that's a little lighter than say the Eastern teams, right? Because it it adds up and it's difficult. So, you know, there's no question that um, teams are leaning on the NHL to try and do do some schedule favors when you're uh, one of the teams that travel a lot. Yeah. uh, Twice bitten here. I think third time shy for the Canucks next year. Uh, Chris tweet on Jack Rathbone. You said you bet his agent is in Patrick Alvin's ear at this stage of the game. Blake's been on this too. Like if not now, then when for Jack Rathbone explain. Yeah, and look, I don't have any particular insight on any conversations that are happening between Jared Buckley and the Canucks organization. This is just me thinking that, you know, based on what every agent would do, you know, if you've got a player like Elias Pettersson who's scoring and playing, you know, Pat Brisson's not calling uh, Patrick Alvin to talk about Pettersson. I mean, they'll, they'll touch base the next time a contract is up for renewal, and that might be it. Um, but when you're in Jack Rathbone's circumstance or another player that's on that bubble, 
the agents are talking to your management team a lot and they're saying, you know, what's it going to take for my guy to get called up if he's in the AHL? And if he's, if he's in the press box, they're saying, look, when's my guy getting a chance? Or if they're not getting a chance, why don't you look at moving them to this team that will give them a chance? Um, look, the, the, the Canucks sign him. He's their asset. They've got no obligation to, to take my advice or anybody else's advice. I mean, if they think that the best chance they have to win is, is putting the other six guys uh, in on defense, then by all means. And, you know, at some point you're going to have an injury and Jack will get his chance. But, you know, this kid has already had a year that was almost ruined by COVID where he was kind of taxi squad and not really getting an opportunity. Then last year with injuries, um, but he did perform very well at the AHL level. And I, I just think, you know, Stillman's a guy that you got, you know, basically in a cap dump of Dickinson. He's, you didn't get him to be anything more than depth. You've got a guy here that you've invested in, that you've you've put the time in to develop him. Give him a chance. You're you're you know oh three and one. If not now, when? And um, you know if that if that doesn't happen, and if if he keeps staying in the press box, I could see a scenario where you know the the agent gets gets really unhappy. And um, you know Jack will never show it. Jack's a classic kid, and he'll 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 be a good soldier. But it's the agent's job to um, to to go at management and say, hey, like. What are you doing with this kid? Mm. There's been other uh, interesting lineup decisions made. Uh, there's also been other interesting comments made um, in the media from out-of-market guys. Colby Cohen is a name not familiar to many here. Uh, Blackhawks guy talking about the makeup of the room. And um, people have been doing their forensic auditing of where those comments might have come from, the, uh, the origin of those. Um, I mean based on what you remember of a lot of the key characters in this team, I mean, is there any reason to believe that's a problem? I mean, given that Kobe and Shaq won championships together, we're not besties uh, for a lot of those years. Um, you know, different personalities doesn't mean that they're necessarily feuding either. Um, and I brought up the, uh, the Sedins and Kessler who weren't, uh, weren't adversarial, but they also probably weren't the best of friends. They were very different kinds of people. And I had no problem winning hockey games as well. What did you make of those comments as they went viral yesterday? Yeah, frankly, I don't give them a lot of credence. You know, I think when, when teams are struggling to win games, people are going to try to pull out any excuse they can find to explain it. But, you know, this is a team that went on a really big run last year with mostly the same team. And there weren't any suggestions that that wasn't a team that was together and, and, and bonded. And from what I've seen, you know, you had a guy like Kuzmenko who seems like everybody loves him. Um, you know, I, I, I don't see how this team suddenly has a huge chemistry problem. But, you know, I'm not in the room. I don't I don't know. Um, so it's possible. But I, I think it's more a case of, you know, you lose a few games and you lose them under pretty ugly circumstances where you blow leads. People are going to try to point fingers and, and, and assess blame. But... I think they win a few games and, and all of that is forgotten and nobody will think that there's a problem in the room. Uh, Marvel stuff. Uh, Chris, good catching up again, my friend. I hope you're well. All the best here and we'll catch up down the road. Awesome. Appreciate being on, guys. Take care.